Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Welcome to my video review on my DaVinci workflow with the Nikon ZR. <laughs> Everything changes every which way. You got to hold on to what you so a little while ago, I did a review on the Nikon ZR, and yes, I did end up buying one. A couple people asked me, what's my workflow in DaVinci Resolve with coloring the Nikon ZR footage? And I simply replied, it's very underwhelming. But someone replied, they want underwhelming. With all of the information out there, they would actually enjoy a video that's just a quick and easy way to get a good image. And I thought, hey, that's not a bad point. I actually even said, not a bad point. So this is that video. Now I should preface this with a couple things. One, I am not a colorist. Although I have colored a lot of my own footage from tons of different cameras throughout the year, I would definitely not consider myself a professional colorist. I learned the basics so I can get a decent image for my work and my needs. A professional colorist will dig a lot deeper. They'll have tons of nodes and they, they really know what they're doing. So if you're a cinematographer and your budget can afford a professional colorist, I highly recommend getting one. But I have colored enough over the years to learn the basics to get what I want out of a camera. So this video is going to be a very simple approach to how I work with the Nikon ZR red code footage, red code footage in general, and we'll check out another camera to see how I apply this workflow to pretty much any camera that I'm using. So first and foremost, the number one step in coloring is get the footage. You have to have footage to color, right? So make sure you're exposing it correctly or exposing it how you would like, knowing how flexible that sensor is in post so you understand how you can manipulate the image. It's actually something a lot of people get wrong nowadays. They kind of assume every camera has the wiggle room of an Ari Alexa, and that's simply not the case. Especially with the Nikon ZR, this is a camera that you will want to expose properly. You have to know its limitations. If you know those limitations, you can get an absolutely phenomenal image out of this camera that certainly is on par with the other reds. So like I would do on any shoot, I try to bake the image or the look that I want into the negative as much as I can, which is into the raw recording of the footage. That being said, we can't always do that you're gonna have some shoots where you don't have full control over the lighting. So we're gonna go through a few examples here of different lighting scenarios. The last thing I'll say is coloring is very much a tool, like anything else, a lens, a light, the type of camera you're using. Coloring is just an additional step in the process to get the tone and the image that you want for the project. I used to think the less coloring the better, which I still somewhat subscribe to. And I kind of developed that ethos of bake the image in through one of my idols, an Academy Award winning DP. So I always thought you just have to bake the image in and leave no wiggle room. Until I ended up getting to work with him. I got to cam op for this man for a week and I really saw his workflow. Now I'm not gonna name names and I'm not gonna air out someone's workflow laundry, but I saw that he very much relied on custom LUTs on set that manipulated the image quite a bit. It sort of allowed me to take a breath and say, well, if he can do it, I can definitely do it. So coloring very much is a tool and you can definitely use it to manipulate your image in post to get something that's more in tune with the story you're trying to tell. That being said, let's grab our paintbrushes and dig into some of this color. <laughs> Everything changes, every which way. All right, so we have DaVinci open here and I've just selected a few clips for us to go through. They all kind of have different controlled lighting and different uncontrolled lighting. So these first are all red from the ZR, and then this last is from the Panasonic S1H, just so I can show you guys how I apply my workflow to other cameras. So let's get into the coloring tab here, and let's start with this clip right here. So I'm gonna just kind of go into right there. And real quick, we just go through our project settings into color management, I just leave things how they are. I don't really do a lot of high dynamic range coloring. If I do, I send that off to a colorist, so we just make sure we're in this DaVinci color space and Rec 709, and that is good enough for me. So first thing I'm gonna do is create four nodes total. I'm gonna get rid of this effects one for now. So four nodes total, and then I kind of work backwards. So my first node for red code this is where I choose my LUT. I'm gonna go down to Film Bias to Rec. 709. If I'm shooting anything red, 95% of the time, I will use the Film Bias LUT because I love it and I think it looks great. All right, so that's applied. And this right here is pretty much what I was seeing on the monitor. I was just monitoring with the LUT. So this is already looking pretty nice, but I know that this camera has more wiggle room 
So we're going to pull some more detail out of this. So then I go to my third node in, or second out. The, uh, the fourth one I just use for the let. So that's it, I keep it there, and then I move on. This one is going to be all things contrast, highlights, shadow, my third node. So first thing I'm gonna do is the S curve, just kind of a standard. We're gonna crush the blacks a little bit. We're gonna roll these highlights off a little more. And we're just gonna leave it at that. Then I'm gonna go into my color wheel. And I know there's a lot more information out here we can pull from, so I'm just gonna pull these highlights down and look at how much of that sky we bring back. It's incredible. I might, in another note, even pull the highlights down further, but in this case I'm not because I like this roll off that it's giving us. And then I can see those, you know, after I affected all of that, this is a little too dark for my taste, a little too crushed. So I might just go back in here and raise these shadows a little bit, and I might raise these mids a little bit. That's looking pretty good. Now we can, of course, stylize this. You know, we can really crush the blacks. You know, we can do a lot with it, but I'm gonna leave it right around here. Then in this node, my second to first, this will be all things color, so hue and saturation. Now the film bias look I really love. It already gives me great color fidelity. Um, that definitely wouldn't do anything with the hue. I might lower saturation depending on the camera a little bit, but for this one, again, I'm very happy with how it looks. The other thing I would adjust here is my temperature. So we can warm this up, we can cool this off, and that can just do that in the temp slider. However, this is red code raw, so we can go to our raw settings here. We can go decode using clip, and we can adjust the color temp here as well, and this will be a little more finite control over that temperature. I'm gonna warm this up a little bit because it's pleasing to me. And that's it. So this looks great. Honestly, I would stop here, but if we zoom in, obviously we're gonna have noise in the shadows. This is very nice noise. I like the grain and the texture of it, but if I wanted to clean this up a little bit, very rare that I do this but I would dedicate my first node to temporal noise reduction. I don't do this much, so I might be doing it wrong, but I go five, better, medium, and I just pump this up to about five, and you'll see here already that that noise cleaned up a lot, quite a bit and we still have plenty of detail in the jeans, in the shirt, and in my butt. And uh, yeah, this looks great. So that is for uncontrolled lighting, that's what I would do. And then if I had other shots similar to this, I would simply do grab still, and then when I'm on another shot, I can right click this still and, and press apply grade and it'll apply the grade I did here to the next shot. But we're not going to do that for this shot. This is a new shot. So same workflow. One, two, three, four nodes. This is controlled lighting. This is exposed how I wanted it to. It looked pretty good in camera. So theoretically, sometimes I might just do the LUT and that's it. I'm done. Just a lot. This is how I saw it in camera. This is how I wanted it. This looks very nice to me. That being said, if I wanted to manipulate this more, I could. And we would do the same thing. Third note in would be contrast and highlights and shadows. Maybe I'll make this a little moodier. That's very moody. Because I'm a moody boy. Everything changes. And same here, this would be for color. Maybe I'll cool this off a little bit. And then if I wanted noise reduction, I would apply it here. But again, if you expose correctly, it's not really that noisy of an image. It's very pleasing. But, you know, if I wanted to, we could go ahead 
and do that as well and get rid of that noise. And this looks very nice. Then one more, another controlled lighting scenario. Again, this is pretty much how I wanted it in camera. So theoretically I apply the LUT and we're done. We're good to go. So this is underexposed by about, I would say almost two stops. So if I mean for it to be underexposed, I may just leave it where it's at. That actually looks pretty nice. But if I wanted to kind of adjust for some of that, we can bring this up just in the curve right here. That way we can keep our shadows kind of crunched, but bring these midtones up in my skin. Something like there. And again, in the first node, that's where, or sorry, the second node, that's where I would adjust any color changes. So I might want to cool this off. Now this image is very noisy because I underexposed it. So this is an example of knowing your camera's limitations because the Nikon ZR does introduce a lot of noise if you do not expose properly. That being said, we can see here that we can get rid of a decent amount of that noise and still maintain some very nice detail in the image. Cleans up very nicely. All right, so that is my workflow with the red footage, but let's see how that applies to something like the Lumix S1H. So same idea, right? Four nodes. For this LED, I'm gonna do my V-log to RE color space to Rec. 709. So essentially this LUT is a one-stop shop to convert the color signs to RE log C and then convert to Rec. 709. And that's how it looks. Now, unlike the red code LUTs um, or the film bias LUT, I find this one to have very low contrast. So you'll see, you know, there's still kind of a washed out feeling to the image. So when I grade Lumix V-Log footage, I'm gonna crush these shadows a lot more than I normally do. And I'm also gonna boost these mids a lot more. I'm gonna lower the highlights a little bit, maybe bring those shadows up a tad more. Something like this. And then we go to this second to last node. We do not have raw control, because this is an H.265 codec, but I can cool off the temp here a little bit and I can drop this saturation a little bit because I find the Lumix Vlog LUT to have a little more saturation than I would like. So something like this. That looks pretty nice to me. I might just bump up the overall exposure just a little bit more. And then again, if I want to add noise reduction, I can in this node, but I don't. Okay, that's that. Welcome back. I know we were just inside of my computer and now we're out in the real world. And the real world is where you can go grab your camera, you can capture footage, you can load it into DaVinci, and you can start coloring on your own. Thank you guys. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you next time.